the whole time goes. So last week we started with the series, Don't Stay Poor. Okay. And I explained that my definition of poor, I wasn't talking about poor people in terms of money only when I'm talking about poor. And by the time we finish this series, you'll see how this definition of poor actually means poor. So I'm not talking about poor people as in, you know, people that are deprived financially. I hope you know that, you know, it's amazing how we, we, we don't understand that people that are poor financially are not necessarily poor in everything. So they might be poor financially, but family wise, they're very wealthy. Relationship wise, they're very wealthy. Emotionally too. So when I'm talking about being poor, I'm talking about passing over opportunities repeatedly. Now, when you pass over opportunities repeatedly, you're poor in your, it can be in your emotions. You know, life will always give us the opportunity to be strong in our emotions, but we fear those times. Life will come at us with all sorts. Jesus said, count it all joy. There's a reason. Don't pass over that opportunity of temptation. Don't pass over that opportunity of a trial. How would you know you're stronger when you run from every appearance of a challenge? How would you know what you're able to do? How would you know what strength you have if every time there's an issue, you cower? How would you know you're not a coward, that you're actually a brave heart? When you pass over opportunities of temptation, you will not be strong. Our strength comes from what we're tempted with. Let me tell you, I've been through some things in my life. But you see, when the enemy has tempted you the first time, the second time, oh my God, by the, by the time it's coming the third time. So the first time it comes, you fight the battle with Christ. The second time you fight, by the third time, you, you know, you're no longer a, a copra. You know, you, you, you <laughs> excuse me, you begin to advance. I don't know all the titles, but you begin to advance in the, in the, in the levels. Let's say as an army, you're no longer a copra. I don't know what's next. Maybe you become a, a colonel from a lieutenant. So you fight that part, you become a colonel, you fight until you become a, uh, is it a brigadier general? Or somebody should help me here. Until you have the highest rank. When you have the highest rank, that's when you get to your wealthy place. But that's not where we're going today. You know, it's a series. Let me not jump before myself. So when you pass over the opportunities of emotion, somebody comes to challenge you. You're not exercising your patience. You're not exercising your self-control. How are you going to be rich? How are you going to be emotionally intelligent? When you pass over opportunities health-wise, they're telling you the best way to live long, to look young, is eat the right food, exercise, you know, um, take a walk, pack your car, you know, replace this for that. But you, you can't be bothered. And then you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't like what you see, or you're starting to have health issues, and you're thinking life is working against you. No, you're passing up you're passing over an opportunity to be rich in health. So when we're talking about poor, yes, sir, generalissimo, that's the word I'm looking for. When you become a God's general, you know, when even God is doing like this for you in heaven, then, but see, it's, it's, it's level by level. So don't pass opportunities. Don't pass over opportunities to be tempted. Please be tempted. Test yourself. Respond. We've done a series on respond and reacting. You know, we might come up with that again. Respond to things of life. Grow. Become a God's general. It doesn't mean that when you become a God's general, that life will not come. Just, you know, you, you should know that when you actually become a God's general, the battles you're going to fight are going to be tougher. But there's a strategy for battle. Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come with the idea. The Holy Spirit will tell you when, where, what. He will tell you how to behave. He will tell you how to respond. The Holy Spirit, see, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, met a lock on Trinity, three in one. They're enough. Strategic to the, strategic to the last point. They give you strategies to live life to the fullest. So when I'm saying poor, you know, when you talk about poor, everybody's antenna goes, you know, to think we're talking about just, uh, financially no 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 it's not just about financial finances here you can be poor you know money is not a definition of how wealthy you are money is just an aspect and i hope you all know that money does not buy everything if this covid times is is a great evidence to show that so when i'm talking poor i'm talking and when we look at the definition of poor before i finish you'll see that really 
You stay poor only because you pass over opportunities to be. Because God did not create anybody for poverty. He did not. I don't see. We can interpret the Bible any which way we want. He said in the beginning. He said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness that they may be fruitful, dominate, replenish, subdue. And the list goes on. We can break it down. God does not change his words. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he says, I esteem, he doesn't, his word, his word is not a joke. His word is real. So God did not create anybody for poverty. It is not where you're coming from that matters. It is where you're going to. You can be born from the poorest family financially or poorest with well, you know, the you, you can come from a fa family that is not even that it's finances that was that is the problem maybe marriage is the issue they're just poor when it comes to marriage issues or they're just poor when it comes to being fruitful or they're just poor when it comes to you know fulfilling purpose you don't you don't have to remain there the one who brings forth the one who opens doors lives within you and i in him we move we have our being we are not meant to fail we are not meant to be poor so passing over opportunities repeatedly. And I quickly want to finish with the story. Remember the guys we were talking about last on Monday, because we're going to go to another, you know, part of the series on, um, on Monday. Remember the two guys, the guy by the beautiful gate and the guy by the pool of Bethesda. We have spoken about them. So the guy by the pool had a, always, you know, we, we were able to analyze that. He didn't have people to help him. Even when Jesus came and said, what do you want to do for you? The first thing he said was, I don't have anybody to help me, you know, because when the pool stares, you must get inside to get healed. We had looked at all that last week. So maybe as we're talking, we can look at that. We had gotten to the point where Jesus told him, stand up, roll up your mat and go. And he did that. He rolled up his mat and he just left. And the other guy at the beautiful gate, Paul had to hold his hand. I just saw that today when I was studying again. Paul had to hold his hand. So the guy at the, uh, at the pool, of, pool of Bethesda could actually stand up on his own. So I think between the two of them, the guy at the beautiful gate was, was in a worse situation. His limbs, you know, his paralysis must have been, you know, much worse than the guy at the beautiful gate. I mean, at the pool of Bethesda, because he just got up and rolled his mat. Paul had to pull this other guy up. The Bible says when he pulled him up, he stood for a moment. Then he did three things. Remember the other guy rolled up his mat and he began to walk away. This other guy did three things. We're going to go and look at it in the Bible. He walked. When he stood, he walked. He leapt and he started praising. Remember we were talking about the attitude and the mindset of people that are poor. My poor now is people that pass over opportunities repeatedly. And we had come with, from the Bible, from the story of these two guys, we had seen that negativity would not allow you. He's a, he's a poor mindset. So the guy at the uh, pool of Bethesda was negative. He was unaware of Jesus. Even when Jesus came and extended his hand and said, what can I do for you? He didn't even know it was Jesus. He responded with negativity. When Jesus said, what would you have me do for you? He said, I can't. <laughs> the first thing he said was, I can't. Okay. So the mindset and the attitude he had was totally negative. He was unaware. We'll see how he affected his behavior. That's where I'm going so that we can round up this today. And then the other guy, right? So this other guy is negative. The other guy at the uh, beautiful gate was more positive. Remember, his friends will bring him to the gate every day. Nobody hangs around a negative person. So his friends will bring him to the gate every day. And he was expectant every day. So when he saw Paul and John, the first thing he said to them is, he was, he was looking at them, what do you have for me? And they said, we don't have any money for you. And remember, if he had a beggar mentality, he would have been turned off like, you know what? If you don't have any money for me, you can't pay me. But he didn't do that. He was still looking at them expectantly that whatever it is you have for me, I want it. And Peter said to him, you know, I have, let's go there. That, um, that, um, Acts 1, 1, 1, 1, let's go there quickly. I don't, I don't want to read out of three. Okay. So Peter said, but Peter said, we don't have any money for you, but I'll give you something else. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Look at that. I command you in the name of, I can't wait for that to tell people, come on, get up. Oh God. 
That will be when I become a generalissimo. Yes. So Peter, then Peter took the lame man by the hand and pulled him to his feet. And as he did, the man's feet and ankle bones were healed. So it was as Peter lifted him up. Imagine if he did not even look at Peter. If when Peter said he didn't have any money for him. Some of us are like that. When God brings help for us, what we're expecting that help to give us, once they're not offering it to us, we disdain that help. We disregard that help. Immediately, remember we said that opportunities don't come dressed the way you expect it to come. So the guy at the beautiful gate, he did not disdain them. We have to be careful and be really alert in our spirit that the, our help we don't, re we don't reject our help because of where our mind is. So obviously this guy was just a good guy. He was just, he was just happy. He was just, he, in his circumstances, he, was, he, was, he had a good heart. Because you know what? If you don't have money to give me, what do you have to give me? And Peter held his hand. And it was when he held his hand, because the Bible says, then, and as he pulled him to his feet, his ankle bones were healed and strengthened. So that he came up with a leap. He came up with a leap. Stood there a moment and then began walking. Then walking, leaping and praising God. He went into the temple with them. I'll just finish reading this and the other one so that we can analyze it quickly. He said, when the people inside saw him walking and heard him praising God. So that's one person walking, leaping, praising. The other one just rolled his mat and just started walking away. These guys was after Jesus had left. Jesus said, I go by, send you a help. So when the help came, the disciples became infused by the Holy Spirit and they could do miracles. This guy at the beautiful gate did not know Peter and John. But you see, when your heart is good, when you don't allow life, when you understand who you are in Christ and you fight, you know, it's, <laughs> this race is a race we fight. We fight. We fight knowing that the weapons are not carnal, but, you know, we bring down things. We bring down things. Anything that wants to exalt itself against the knowledge of God in your life, you bring it down. How? Hold it captive. But with the scriptures, it is, you don't relax. There's no relaxing. Every day, every day the enemy wants to steal and he wants to take from you. He wants to take your joy. He wants to take your peace. He wants to take your rest. See, the material things that God blesses us with is not what keeps us. It is not your husband or your wife that keeps you sane. It is not your children. It is not your business that keeps you sane. Jesus keeps us sane. The Holy Spirit keeps us sane. It is the Holy Spirit that comforts us deep down. Man cannot really comfort us. Healing takes place from on the inside because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you and I. So the enemy is looking to steal your joy. But this man at the beautiful gate, he was obviously refused to let go of the one thing. No material things, but the one thing he had is joy. He refused to let it go. Because when you have joy, it says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. When you, when you take your joy by force in the Holy Spirit, the tendency is that you will have some hope. You will be optimistic. You will believe a bit more. You'll be ready. The tendency is that at the end of the day, you just know that God is on your side. This is, this is how I think the man at the beautiful gate was. So when, when he saw Peter, anybody that came his way, he was expecting that they were destiny helpers. People come your way, guys. People come our ways and we disrespect them. We look at them like they're small. You know, once they're not, um, once they're not dressed the way we think they should be dressed, they can't help us, can they? Once they're not speaking the language, they should be speaking. They can't help us. We need to be spiritually alert. Your help can come in, in, in guise. Opportunities come guised. Help come guised. So passing over opportunities repeatedly is not only in season opportunity. I hope you're getting it. It is a, it is a, it is a multi, it is a, what word am I going to, it is a melting point of so much because God is looking at us. When you go and look at his mandate for us when he created us, if you break it down, you see all the melting points there. Subdue. How? Multiply. How? What for? What am I multiplying for? Why am I subduing? Why am I replenishing? What's the idea behind it? It's a melting pot. But when you're into yourself, when it is only me, myself, and I, the tendency is that you're going to be like the man at the pool of Bethesda. He could only see himself. He did not even know Jesus. Jesus was returning. See, look at the two guys. 
The guy <laughs> at the beautiful gate did not have the opportunity to meet Jesus. Imagine. And this guy met the king of kings himself, the lord of lords, the one that comes into a, <laughs> into a place and healing takes place. He didn't know him. So let me not, because I can keep going. Let me just finish this. So when the people inside saw, this is the man at the, at the beautiful gate. When the people inside saw him walking and heard him praising God and realized it was the lame beggar, the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were inexpressibly surprised. This is a, a different version. Now, when people see you praising, what happens to them? What do they do as well? They start praising, don't they? So they all rushed out to Solomon's hall. They rushed out. Who doesn't like joy? Who doesn't like to see things of joy? They rushed out to see what was going on. That man and his praising. So they rushed out uh, to Solomon's hall where he was holding. Listen to this. Where he was holding tightly. The man was holding tightly to Peter and John. He recognized. I pray that God helps us to recognize helpers in our lives. That's the prayer I pray every day. That, that, that Lord, let me not be the one that will send away my help. This guy held on tightly, the Bible says, to Peter and John. Why? He knew these guys, there's something here. You know, people help us a little, they give us a little help and, and we're ungrateful or we don't remember. People, people do something for you that breaks a level for you and you forget. You don't remember. You have to be careful. You don't, you don't let go of People that have come into your life to make you better. See, once, once somebody has done something for you once to make you better, forever they're part of your, of your destiny. Even if later they do something to upset you, stay in a place of gratitude for them. Because they were part of the people that broke a barrier or broke a limitation in your life. This guy at the beautiful gate, he held on tightly. See, when you hold on to your network and your connections properly <laughs> opportunities come you see how this guy so his attitude created an opportunity our attitudes will create opportunity by holding on tightly to john and peter by praising and singing and leaping his attitude created an opportunity that i'm sure he benefited from as well do you know how many times my attitude has created opportunity for me with my husband ah you have to be wise amen see your attitude has to create opportunities for you with your wives. Attitude is key. With your employers, your attitude will create opportunities for you. When you, when you. when you run a business, the people that work with you will do anything for you because your attitude creates opportunities for them. So this guy's attitude, he, cl he clung to Peter and John. So you guys are going nowhere. Everyone stood there. Odd. Everyone stood there. Odd, he was in public. The beautiful gate was a very popular place. Talk about him arising at the right point. This guy that was had been in a dump for so many years, when his opportunity came, one time, the number of eyes that saw him, he was not in secret. He was not in a small place. He said, so everyone stood there, awed by the wonderful thing that had happened. Look at what the Bible says next. Peter saw his opportunity. And addressed the crowd immediately. Imagine the number, the crowd that was there. For, for the Bible to say that Peter, I'm getting warm. For the Bible to say that Peter saw the crowd and took the opportunity to preach. One man, his attitude created an opportunity, not only for Jesus to be glorified, but he himself, his life would never have remained the same. Because I'm sure that he didn't let go of Peter and John. So let me quickly flip to our other guy. Okay, John 5, let me quickly flip to him and read what he did so that we can round up. I don't know how long I've spent. Okay, so this is where Jesus, Jesus now said to him, this is man at the Bethesda pool. You know, Jesus had said, what do you want from me? He said, I can't, you know, every time when the pool is, a, is a staring, nobody to carry me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Victims mentality. That's not for today. We'll talk about that. Victims mentality. You better drop it. The Bible says we're more than conquerors. Drop the victims. It can't help you. It can't, it can't help you. So it says, Jesus said, told him, stand up, roll your mat. Okay. Roll up your sleeping mat and go on home. 
Instantly, the man was healed. Instantly, the other guy, they had to hold his hand to pull him up. He was instantly healed. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up the mat and began walking. But it was on the Sabbath when this miracle was done. So the Jewish leaders objected. Now, the other guy was busy leaping and, and jumping. He was already attracting attention. This one was sluggishly walking away until the Jewish leaders saw him. So they objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't walk, walk, not walk, walk on the Sabbath. It's illegal for you to carry that sleeping mat. You know, Jesus had said, roll up your mat and go. You know what he said? <laughs> the man who healed me. Can you see attitude? When you need 10,000 naira and they give you 10,000 naira and they ask you, who helped you? Hey, somebody. It was somebody. It was somebody that helped me. The somebody does not have a name, Abby. So that you can send somebody. That's, you can send that person that is asking you to go and thank that somebody on your behalf. Somebody. Somebody. Because you, you are too proud to let people know that somebody helped you. See, it is only when you're faithful to declare what the, thing, the things that God has done, that much more will come. The Bible says we overcome by the words of our testimony. So this guy said, the man who healed me told me to, was his reply. Who said such a thing as that? They demanded. The man didn't know. He still didn't know Jesus. Somebody, <laughs> oh God, oh God. Somebody, <laughs> you've been somewhere for years. Nobody can help you. You finally get help. They ask you, you're not jumping, you're not praising. He was so down in himself. The negativity had eaten so deep. God forbid that we allow the enemy to take us to the point where we do not see the help of Jesus in our lives anymore. The negativity was so much. The man, he, he, he just couldn't see it. So the man didn't know and Jesus had disappeared. into. He really didn't know who Jesus was. He really didn't know who Jesus was. And some of us that Jesus is with us, we really don't know who Jesus is. Because if you know who Jesus is, there's some things you will not say to him. There's some things you will not ask him. You don't know who Jesus is. So, or we don't know who Jesus is. Let me count myself join. I count myself join. I'm just trying to find him too. We don't know. Honestly, we don't know who Jesus is. Not you. We, 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 we. I'm as guilty. So the man didn't know and Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But look at this, guys. But afterwards, I just love Jesus. But afterwards, Jesus found him. Jesus went to look for him because he knew that the attitude was still wrong. Because he knew that even after he encountered him. See, when we say we're born again, I am a strong believer that when we get born again, our lives cannot remain the same. It is not possible for your life to remain. That one, I boldly say that it is not possible for your life to remain the same when you genuinely know Christ. It's not possible, please. There's something you're doing wrong. I can, I can beat my chest on that. You know, on the other one of knowing Jesus fully, I, I join body. But that you get born again and your life remains the same, I stand boldly to say it is not true. I stand boldly to say that when you encounter Christ, when you encounter Christ, he changes, see, he is the one that is, doesn't change you, but he changes situations when you really encounter him. So this guy, Jesus went back to look for him, that guy, is me. So Jesus went to look, he said, he says, but afterwards, I don't know when I'm training, guys, I'm, I'm calmer. But when I'm discussing Bible, I'll be doing, eh? God help me. I want to be like when I'm doing training, you know, just be talking calmly. But no, I'm so excited. <laughs> I've begged the Holy Spirit to help me to be cool. But I don't know. Anyway, so, but afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, um, now you are well. Jesus went back to look for him. Now you are well. Don't sin as you did before or something even worse. <clears throat> pardon me, may happen to you. Don't sin like you did before or something worse. Jesus knew his heart. Jesus knew his heart. So when they're saying this present time pandemic is God punishing us, no, our sins punish us. God does not punish and the Holy Spirit keeps coming back every day. It keeps coming back to teach us. It keeps coming back to tell us. Remember we spoke about the fruits of the Spirit in, in Take Your Place series. Take your place. Be a soldier for Christ. Fight this battle. It is not a joke. 
The enemy is constantly on the prowl. And get me right. It is not that when I say it is not a joke, it is not that every morning you say, oh, yes, devil, I'm ready. No, it is in living. It is in living your life according to the principles of the kingdom. It is in you imbibing the habits of a child of God that you become endued. You become empowered to fight battles. Yeah? So, now you're well, don't sin and go away. Then the man, look at what the man did. <laughs> Remember the other guy? <laughs> so this, oh, the other guy stood, held on tightly to John and Peter, right? Look at what this guy did. After Jesus went to him, how many times has Jesus been to us? God, Father, Lord, please don't trust. Anyway, so, uh, look at this. It says, when Jesus went to him and told him, don't sin anymore, then the man went to find the Jewish leaders <laughs> and told them it was Jesus who had healed him. He didn't say anything to the Jesus. He went to look for his enemies. He went to look for his detractors. See, when you are a negative person, when you, all you think about is you, you tend to be a traitor. You tend to betray people. You tend, you tend to erode people's trust in you. You tend to tell. You're a kiss and tell. And then you never tell what that person does for you. All you do is talk about the negative. So he went back to look for the Jewish leaders and told them it was Jesus that healed him. And verse 16 says, I mean, verse 16 says, so they began harassing Jesus as a Sabbath breaker. So he was still, uh, he was still a Pharisee in his mind. He had encountered Christ. So you can encounter Christ and still not be a child of God. You can encounter Christ and still have religion in your heart. And religion does not know how to nurture relationships. Religion knows to just prove points. Religion does not know to nurture relationships. And you'll see how if you look at every time opportunities come, opportunities come through men. Opportunities don't just stay on the ground. They come through situations. They come through men. They come through time. This pandemic time is a situation that if you settle down well, not everybody is going to be online. Please, we're going to talk about that. Not everybody is meant to be online. Settle down and look at this situation. Is there an opportunity there for you? So our, our opportunities come through men. He just reported Jesus. While the other guy at the gate was holding on to Peter. Same situation. Life are dealt with these two people. Life is dealing with all of us right now. I said to people, I said, before Corona came, life, life was happening. And then Corona now comes and adds to it. And when Corona goes, life is going to continue to happen. And the truth, the truth of the matter is, it is at the feet of Jesus that you get endued with the power to live life with faith. It is at the feet of Jesus. So the guy at the, uh, uh, at, the Beth I mean, at the beautiful gate created a relationship with Peter and John, created an opportunity for Peter and John to seize. So not only did he create an opportunity with his attitude, Peter and John could seize the opportunity. Now, let me ask you this question. With a man at the pool of Bethesda, who knew him? Obviously, people were watching him as well. Because, you know, it was not a free area as well as a crowded place. People were watching and there would have been a conclusion about him. And the same thing at the pool or I mean, at the beautiful game, people were watching. The other man drew people to him with his attitude. He drew people to him with his joy. Leaping, you know when you're walking is that you're putting one step in front of the other. When you're leaping, you're jumping. The jump must have actually, why is this man jumping? Wow, that's the lame guy. Why is this lady jumping? She's not married. She's not, she doesn't have children. She, why is she jumping? Remember, your hope has got to remain. Why is that man jumping? He lost everything. He was jumping and he was praising God because he had an understanding and he didn't let go of Peter and John. The Holy Spirit just prompts you. How many times has the Holy Spirit prompted you and it came to something fruitful? How many times has the Holy Spirit helped me? He helps me a lot. Up to choosing cloth. Yes, cloth. When I'm, when I'm convinced and I don't know what to wear, tell me, you can, you can wear that one. Forgive me, sometimes I do these things, you know. Just, I'm actually, <laughs> anyway. So, to round up, because next week we're going to talk about uh, 
Don't stay poor. You know, the Holy Spirit is just giving me acronyms. I don't even understand. The acronyms are just coming. So next week, we're going to talk about don't stay poor, soar, like the ego, soar. And then we'll look at what that means. But let me just show you something before we now go. So remember, your, your life will try to dictate to you who you should become. You speak back to life. Maintain your attitude. Maintain your mindset. How? Stay in the spirit. Speak in tongues if you don't know what to say. The spirit will pray on your behalf. Ask God to give you a good heart. Renew in me a new heart, O oh Lord. Stay that way. The more you keep your mind positive, the more hopeful you are. Faith is hope. Hope is tied to faith. If you're going to have faith in the things that God has said, it's because you keep hope alive. Don't allow negative people around you. Don't allow negative situations to settle into you. Don't listen to negative words. Okay? So, knowing that once you have a right attitude, your emotions, you can manage your emotions. You can, you can actually decide to operate in the fruits of the Spirit. You can deliberately and consciously say, you know what, I'm going to operate in the fruits of the Spirit. Remember, and then from what we've seen, attitude builds character as well. Look at the other guy. Traitor, was unaware, bad attitude, did not act. He couldn't say thank you. He was not even happy. He went to report Jesus. Your attitude will create your, your character. And you don't know. And people are giving you feedback. The thing you did yesterday, I don't like it. And I say, if you don't like it, you know what? Stay, stay on your own. When you get feedback that your character is bad, settle down. Look at it well. And if you have to apologize, please apologize. It's not about them. It's about you. It's about you. Attitude builds character. What do people say about you? I'm not saying be a people pleaser. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you owe, you, you, you have a responsibility to God. You have a responsibility to Jesus to operate as a good work. Ephesians 2 verse 9 said, before time, you were ordained to do good works. You, we owe it to our God that the endowment he has given us, the power from the cross, the resurrection power, we use it to affect lives. We use it to make lives better. Ultimately, we're making our own life better. So attitude builds character. Attitude creates opportunities. That's what we've concluded on this series now. So that we can move on to the next one. So your attitude creates opportunities. Your attitude controls your emotions. Your attitude um, builds your character. And like I said, finally, it creates opportunities. And we saw it where Peter, Peter could preach to a multitude because of one man's attitude. Your attitude will take you before kings. We'll talk about that now just to round up. Okay, so. In saying that, I remember like, you know, the, the different examples we gave in having the right attitude. And, I, you know, I was joking around with husband and wives, but I'm serious. Honestly, wives and husband, your attitude will create opportunities for you with your spouse. That's the truth. But let's now quickly look at the definition of poor and then we round this up. Because, you know, if somebody said, ah, but, you know, that, that, that acronym, it ties together. And I was just curious while I was doing this study that what does it even mean to be poor? And do you know that poor has four definitions? Apart from having little money or not being financially empowered, it says being poor means having little money or no possession. Something that is poor is of low quality, not good enough. Something that is poor deserves sympathy. And something that is poor, being poor means lacking something. So four definitions, having little or no money. Low quality means poor. Something that deserves sympathy means poor. And also lacking something means poor. Now, Jesus can do something about all this. And that's what we're saying. See, when you have little money, look for the opportunity to work. You know, when, when I'm, I'm with my, I have my team in place and um, I'm this tough person that, you know, when I'm advising people, sometimes it looks like I don't have blood in my veins or that i'm just being mean no it's coming from a place of reality a place of truth that see i i will give you if i, I don't know the person that will come to me and ask that i won't give i will give you but i i'm more more than anything else i desire that i don't give you i desire that you have yours i desire that you you own your own and the only way you own your own is when i tell you the truth and the truth is if you have little money, go and work. Go and work. Proverbs 12 verse 11 is there. There's a lot of scriptures about laziness. Go and look for work. From no money, if you do kong kong and get, I don't know how much the pay boy did, 2,000. 2,000 is better than no money. 
The reality of it is you don't have to stay without money. So when people come to me, yes, I will give you, but then I want you. I don't want to keep giving you fish. Learn to fish. Okay? Something that is poor is low quality or low standard. That means you don't do things properly. Your attention to detail is zero. Diligence, the Bible says those that are diligent stand before kings. And when you serve kings, what's the result? So when you do things poorly, what do you expect? You're bringing your goods to the marketplace and the attention is zero. And they're telling you, you're saying, that's how, don't come at all. And if you will, we'll talk about that. That's a different thing. Strategy for business, that's not today. But if you must, you are aware of the people you serve. Yeah, maybe while you're serving mere men, your attention to detail can be. But if you desire to serve kings, no. If it's not looking the path, if it's not looking the path, sorry, don't bring it. Don't, don't, don't just don't, don't, don't go there. So if it is low quality, apply diligence. Doing things rightly at the right time, apply diligence. Diligence holds a lot in. It's not for today. Go and Read upon diligence. Apply diligence. It says deserving sympathy. When, when something is poor, it's deserving sympathy. That means that thing or that person carries a, a what's the word am I going to use now? A victim's mentality. When, you, when you're wanting to say, see me, oh, hey, see the situation, I mean, oh, see this. You are looking for sympathy. You're, you're remaining poor because when you do that, all men will do is keep giving to you. All men will do. For some people, they think it's the place to be, but it's not. Because you will never, ever become all that God has ordained you to be. So, um, for uh, deserving, uh, um, what the Bible says about us, you know, about, you know, you wanting sympathy. is that we're more than conquerors. We're champions. That's the way God ordained us. Don't, don't, don't put yourself in the place of a victim. Yes, life will happen. But the moment life happens, remember, happen back to life. How? Look at the situation. Bring Jesus in. Speak the word. Check it out. Pray about it. Fast if you must. Remember, you can only become a generalissimo or a brigadier, uh, uh, major general or brigadier, brigadier. Brigadier, is that what it is? Yeah, I think it's brigadier. You know, the top notch. I'm going to look for all those things. Do you understand? You only become top of the game when you fought battles. So don't, life has not, you have not even reached 50. You have not reached 70. You're already carrying a victim's mentality when life still has so much more in store for us. Carry your bazooka, carry your AK-47. That's the word. Shoot it at the situation. That's how you respond. Okay? And then it says lacking something. And this is what the scripture says about lacking. It says Psalm 34 verse 10. The, long, the young liars suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing so you cannot you are not meant to be poor don't pass over your opportunities there is no way every definition of poor can be can be can be what's the word now nullified by the scripture i'm sweating yeah so no those that seek the lord no good thing do they lack no good thing do they lack so I round up with this. This is a time, there's no doubt that things are going to change. But normal, normal, normal is still going to come. We're still going to have our normal. Life is still going to settle, but things are not going to remain the same. So as a person, begin to propose in your heart. This is what we're doing here. Begin to propose, begin to plan. For now, for later, this is a good time for you to settle down and actually Understand where you are with the things of life and begin to talk to the Holy Spirit about it. And so I round up again with verse uh, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 5. So that your faith would not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. And my prayer today as we finish is we will not remain in a place that the, that the, the, the mind of God for us will manifest in our lives. Because it says, above all things. I wish that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers so that we will be rich emotionally. We will be rich spiritually. In our finances, we will be rich. In our relationships, we will be rich. In our marriage, we will be rich. In everything that we lay our hands on, we will be rich. And the Lord will just perfect all that concerns us in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you guys. I hope you had a good time. I did. Thank you for turning up again.
God bless you. Have a fantastic day. For my guys in Nigeria, please stay safe. Don't go out if you don't have to go out. Carry your gloves. Carry your... Don't shake. Elbow people. Be elbowing. You hear? Carry your sanitizer. It's real. It's real. It is real. We are here. Over 30,000 people have died. Protect yourself. Please protect yourself.